for the quarter that has just gone by run us through the breakup as far as your biopharma and research services business are concerned they have been driving your growth haven't they yes i think we have uh, had a very good year thus far uh, this quarter we have delivered uh, 105 crores of uh, pat uh, but i must uh, emphasize here that we have had a a much lower r and d spend this quarter uh which has of course allowed us to uh you know deliver better pat numbers uh, having said that we've also seen uh, at a 9 month level higher tax uh, levels by almost 20 crores uh, we've seen higher depreciation and amortization and i must also uh, mention here that some of the malaysia carrying costs are also being reflected in this quarter's uh, numbers so if you put all that into context then i think we've had a very very strong uh, you know q3 and the first 9 months as well i think there are um, questions being asked about why our biopharma sales have dipped compared to q2 and i think the 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 main explanation there is that q2 was helped with some large global tenders that we won uh, last quarter and this obviously has not repeated this quarter the lower r&d spends is certainly not indicative of thing of of the same trends to occur going forward uh, we in fact expect r&d spends to increase but the reduced r&d spending is uh, attributable to a number of factors the main one being the moratorium on clinical trials in india which has seen us uh, either defer or take some of these trials overseas which of course then takes time for those numbers to kick in um apart from that uh, you know a certain new site initiations uh, normally don't take place during this particular time of the year so we do expect this to now uh, kick in going forward so all, overall i think we've had a very good set of numbers um our research services business continues to stride ahead we've again seen a, an excellent 35% year on year growth and uh, you know we are certainly seeing this as a very very important uh, growth uh, driver of our group business and now an important driver in your business has been research services this year could you tell us as to how operations are expected to pan out looking forward and if there are any updates on the ipo for sinjin as well so i think sinjin as i mentioned continues to drive very robust growth uh, you know and i think uh, the differentiated and integrated offerings that sinjin and clinigen between them can uh, provide to its customers has actually seen their customer base increase it's seen the volume of uh, business increase and i think clearly we are uh, you know looking at uh, we have been looking at listing sinjin for a, a while yet and uh, we continue to be focused on the timing of this ipo uh and obviously we will certainly aggressively pursue it once the general elections are over we do not want to list sinjin at a time of uncertainty and we would like to see how the market conditions are post uh, the general election so we are still uh, looking at a listing in the next fiscal All right. Can you elaborate more as far as Biocon's collaboration with Advaxis is concerned? You know that is something that we've been tracking. What will this type really? Uh, what is this type for? And also in, uh, in in the scope of you know how we can really expand these operations? Can you run us through that? Well, as you know, uh, you know Biocon is continuously looking at how to expand its research pipeline, especially its novel platforms. and we've had two such opportunities in recent times the first was with quark pharmaceuticals for a very important new technology platform based on what we refer to as sirna or short interfering rna which is really a very hotly pursued area right now for drug development and uh, this is a, a, a you know a new technology platform which we have we are, which we are very capable of uh, developing and uh, we already have a product that we're looking at for uh, open angle glaucoma uh, as the first uh, drug to be developed using this platform the second that you just referred to advaxis is a very very interesting opportunity for us it's a novel hpv vaccine an ideal kind of product for india uh, you know 
Advaxis has conducted phase two clinical trials for this particular uh, vaccine with very, very impressive data. And that's what has basically got us into partnership with Advaxis to see how we can actually deliver this vaccine uh, in a very affordable way to the Indian uh, cancer patients. In, you know, it's, it's, it's being targeted for cervical cancer. Now, can you also provide us with any updates on the ongoing development of oral insulin? So oral insulin is a program that uh, is in to development and uh, with, uh, you know, uh, uh, BMS being our partner who have an option uh, agreement with us on this particular asset. We have seen a lot of delays uh, in developing this product, largely again on account of uh, uh, the Indian clinical trial environment, which has had to then see us shift this program to the U.S., but I'm pleased to say that uh, the, the U.S. trials have just commenced. So uh, we remain focused on taking this product to the market.